so this is very early results, um, and it's really a collaborative effort that I'm going to describe today. Uh, you, as you know, uh, most of the time, thermal ablation is performed following an intracardiac route uh, with RF catheter, and this is for treating uh, atrial fibrillation <coughs> by uh, insulating the pulmonary, pulmona, pulmonary veins. Uh, but we and others uh, proposed a different uh, competitive approach, which uh, follows a transesophageal route. Uh, we would like to design a transesophageal HIFU applicator, as you can see on the sketch here. Uh, why that? Uh, first, uh, because uh, the acoustic window is excellent. Uh, it's most of the time using for imaging the art, the TEE. Uh, the procedure can be image guided. Uh, we believe the procedure is safe because of the um, uh, extracardiac approach, and uh, we have some exper expertise on the treatment of prostate uh, protecting the rectum, so it's very similar. So the, the, the goal now is, our first, is it very feasible uh, to treat different targets in the art, and is it efficient? So this is what we attempted to do, starting with the previous experiments in pigs where we could uh, ablate uh, part of the art, but it was extremely difficult due to um, the coupling, which was pretty bad. As you can see on this uh, scanner here, uh, well, you cannot see, I cannot show you, in fact, but um, uh, there is the other fagus, um, which is uh, the, the, the bronchi and the trachea are located just between the art and the fagus. That's a serious issue. For monitoring, we have been working with colleagues in Paris using shear wave uh, elastography, and it seems to work. So the plan for the current work, it's to uh, pursue on a more appropriate uh, animal model, which is a non-human primate, to check the feasibility of the project, and also to evaluate passive elastography for mon monitoring techniques. This way, we don't have to push tissues, which can be kind of quite far away, and uh, uh, passive elastography relies on the uh, uh, physiological motion in order to generate shear wave, and this is the shear waves that we are using for uh, imaging the elasticity. So this is a probe that was designed with the support of the company Vermont. Uh, it is composed of two transducers, uh, one for therapy, uh, uh, eight elements, eight rings, and one for imaging. So it's mounted at the tip of an endoscope that we will insert in the other of, of the edges of the animal. The experiment was performed on a baboon uh, weighing uh, 30 kilograms. So we performed first uh, a CT scan just to check that the uh, um, the fagus was um, properly uh, located with respect to the art, and the art was uh, visible acoustically. Uh, we followed the um, um, electrical, uh, electrical physiology of the, of the art before treatment. We used B-mode imaging in order to select the target uh, on the art. Uh, we performed uh, elastography, both shear wave and passive, before and after IFU application. For this particular animals, we selected four targets on the art. Uh, three of them are located in the uh, uh, atrium, and one, uh, the third one, which is important, you'll see in the, in the ventricle. Uh, we checked after treatment with endoscopy that the esophagus was not uh, treated, uh, damaged. Um, and we uh, used MR uh, one day after treatment to evaluate the eventual thermal damage. So this is a summary of the results. So we had the confirmation with the scanner that um, the, the model was a good one. Uh, as you can see on the, uh, uh, on the little clip here, uh, we could very well uh, identify the different cavity uh, in the art. Um, the probe could be uh, successfully uh, inserted in the, uh, in the esophagus. Um, that was quite challenging. Uh, we didn't know if it would be feasible, but it was. Um, the IFU could be delivered at the targeted site. Uh, so Keep in mind that it was like between three and five centimeters away from the uh, esophagus. Uh, for these exposure conditions, we had no impact on the ECG, but it's not very surprising as we had a very uh, limited um, point of actions. Uh, we didn't change any change. We didn't see any change on echogenicity after treatment on the four targeted sites. Uh, this happens very often in tissues. Um, we didn't damage esophagus. That is very important, and uh, we uh, had serious difficulty in order to image the uh, uh, atrial septum, uh, both with MRI and astrography. The most interesting results uh, was observed on the third lesion. If you remember, it was in the ventricle, where we observed consistent change in terms of uh, uh, stiffening. Uh, and also, uh, you'll see, 
with MRI, so my procedure. So this is uh, where the lesion was uh, on ultrasound and B-mode imaging. So we, um, we observed the stiffening. We doubled the, the, the stiffness of the, of the, the local stiffness where we treated, uh, measured with um, uh, shear wave uh, elastometry. Similarly, uh, as you can see on the passive elastography, the average wavelength uh, was increased by 20% in the same place. So we are not sure the tissue were ablated, but at least something happened. Uh, so we'll have to work on the, on the acoustic properties. And on MRI, MRI we, uh, we also observe some hyper signal. It's kind of fade, but well, I cannot see it. Oops, sorry. I don't know why it's a pointer, but uh, where we treat it, there is some hyper signal. We believe it is due to um, the treatment. So in conclusion, we believe it's feasible to induce thermal damage with this transesophageal high food probe in cardiac tissues, at least in the ventricle, because we couldn't say in the, in the atrium. The procedure is safe. Um, passive elastography is feasible for detecting thermal damage. And there is, it's interesting because there is no need for this um, distant push. It can be problematic. And we are working on different methods for improving, improving imaging and therapy. So uh, conclusion, I'd like to thank uh, our support, the Focus Ultrasound Surgery Foundation, Vermont, we build a transducer, and the, uh, my colleagues uh, from the Lapto in Lyon. And uh, just a little last message, uh, make sure you uh, uh, write, uh, save the dates for the upcoming ISTU meetings. It will be held in, Nashville, in uh, China, Nanjing, and in Nashville in two years. Thank you very much for your attention. So let's start out with a question. Um, as far as tracking the tissue during the um, ablations, how are you following the, the, the ventricle wall or the target? We are not right now, and this is one of the directions we will uh, we'll work on for improving the, um, the efficacy of the treatment. As long, what the, the, the thing is that we have a, an annular um, array, so with only eight elements, so we st can steer the beam only along the acoustic axis of the high food transducer. So it's better than not following the motion, but we won't be able to track, like in 3D, uh, the motion of the, of the ventricle. Question here. Yes, sir. Nice presentation. What are your exposure times? Like, how fast are you treating this, and what, at what intensities are you doing the ablation now? Uh, well, I, I squeezed this, uh, this slide because it was very short, but <laughs> the data was given here. It's uh, the focal pressure uh, intensity is 3,000 watt per square centimeter. And we uh, delivered uh, four exposure, um, four exposure at each site of 16 seconds. This is a result of simulations, but uh, we had to start with something, and we don't know if we have to apply more than this. Right. So, but over a 16-second period, there's going to be a lot of motion, right? So yeah. But in fact, we are taking advantage of this because we want to ablate uh, uh, quite six zones of tissue. So, uh, in the ventricle, it can be up to a centimeter or even more than that. So. <coughs> Do you have any pathology on the um, tissue? No, uh, because for we we add in the pro where well, we add in the protocol to, to to keep the animal alive for the moment. Uh, maybe in the future we'll do mm -hmm. an acute study, but for the moment the animal uh, we must keep them alive. Mm 